Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, traders from across the globe, and welcome to Short Term Trading Live with Oscar's Weekend Webinar. Traders, this weekend webinar will be part two, lesson in an inverted head and shoulders formations, and what will usually happen to the market once they've been created. Now, if you've watched these last couple of videos, we had head and shoulders formations inverted in the indice markets, world indices, as well as the U.S. And I got in front of the camera and said, no way, traders, it is not the bottom. It is not ready to go up. Inverted head and shoulders generally will give you a bounce, which needs to be sold. And continuation down, we should go. Lo and behold, traders, hey, it's exactly what happened. You go technical analysis. That was not my opinion. That was what I read from technical analysis. Now, what I have to show you here, I have a couple of little illustrations here off to my right. What we're looking at right here is this. In a normal market, a head and shoulders formation like you see here, you build a shoulder, you build a head, then you build a shoulder. Many times what happens next is very interesting. The market will rally and just about test the middle of the head and then dump and give you your downward move. Head and shoulders formation, come out of the right shoulder, test the middle of the head, and then break. That's what you would normally expect, and you will see in a few moments when I show you some charts, that is basically what happens with inverted head, with an upright head and shoulders. Now, we're working with the inverted head and shoulders. That's what's happening right here, right now, in our markets as of this moment in time. We have an inverted head and shoulders where it is, there's a left shoulder, then there's a head which is below, sort of like a man standing on its head. Left shoulder, the head, the right shoulder's above it. What could happen now is this. You get the dead cat bounce and the drop, and we got that, we traded it, and we did well on it. Now, if you test the middle of the head and fail to break it, you will likely get a big rally out of the inverted head and shoulders, and end up up here somewhere. So very interesting, traders. For us traders right now, when we are in the market, as I tell you, as analysts, this entire market is one big story. We read the chapters, we read the charts, we're in the story, the story is ever evolving and just continues. Where we are in this particular part of the story is we have inverted head and shoulders, and the heads have been tested. If we cannot take out the heads on the downside, well, all you bulls that have been going crazy looking for a reason to buy, you may get your wish. I'm not calling for any bottoms and certainly don't fall in love with the upside. But what I am saying is I, my eyes are wide open. I am an analyst and I watch the analysis. I am a pure technician. If the analysis says go left, I go left. If it says go right, I go right without any human decision involved. The charts make the decisions for me. So, what I'm saying is this. If this chart, which you will see on the board in a few moments, I'll illustrate some charts. If we cannot get below the head on the inverted head and shoulders in the world indices, well, then we will get some kind of a pop. Now, before you start getting happy and calling the bottom and throwing parties and jumping up and down, remember this. I have mentioned to you that the real estate shoe, the... the Commercial real estate shoe is going to drop. I right? remember that. I did that last video and many videos before this. And I said, if it drops, it's going to be huge. Well, I'm reading. I read all the newspapers. I read all the news I can get my hands on, especially on the weekends, right? I'm reading the papers this weekend. The second tallest building in Chicago next to the Sears Tower is being built by Donald Trump. Well, guess what just happened? Financing dried up. He's suing for billions of dollars of damages. He's gotten tens and tens of millions of dollars of his own money in this project. And you know what happened? He's out of financing. You know why? Because banks and brokers and lenders are all looking at it going, Donald, you and the rest of this world, you're not going to sell that to anybody when it's finished. How are we going to get paid back? And they're stopping the funding. That is commercial real estate. If you think it's just in our country... We have Sheldon Adelson. Does everybody know who he is? One of the, you guys know who he is, right? Yeah. One of the biggest real estate investors on the planet. And I believe he's the chairman of the Sands Corporation here in Vegas. He's building two buildings, was building two buildings in Singapore. You know what's happened to those two buildings in Singapore? 
They've run out of financing. He is scrambling and scraping up everywhere he can to try to get financing to finish those two buildings. If you think there's only three buildings being affected by today's problems, forget about it, traders. The commercial real estate shoe is going to drop, and it's going to drop big. That's coming. So if in turn we don't take out the bottom of the head and do get a rally, I will say it again. Don't fall in love with the upside because it isn't really going anywhere. You may get a dead cat bounce. You may. But if you get one, you got to sell it. Now, I am still of the mode that this thing's going down and we're going to take out the head and continue lower. But I don't know that for sure. I don't have a crystal ball. I'm like the rest of you out there. I got to rely on the analysis to know what's coming next. So just to let you know where we stand, we're like dead center in the middle of this thing. We went down, almost tested the head, and it's just hovering. And on Friday, as you've seen towards the close, which you can expect, we had a little bit of a pop in the world indices, especially here in the U.S., but we had gone down seriously Wednesday and Thursday, so a little pop on Friday is probably in line. Okay, now one more thing before we start getting to charts, traders. I have shared this idea with many, many of my Omniacs, especially you guys that are part of this office, that are part of the Omni Trading Academy. And I have said many, many times over that I think this entire world economic problem is purely based on crude had gone nuts in the last two years. If you have the price of crude, which affects every country, every commodity, it affects every business on the planet. If every human in every business on the planet is feeling a pinch, is feeling pressure, is feeling their money being pulled on, well, that's got to come out somewhere, traders. That's like having bottled up pressure. And somewhere it's got to burst. And it came out in our economies and in our stock markets. That's where the cork came out and everything let loose. I have been of that opinion since this started, since crude got above 110. I said this is going to wreck the world's economies. And lo and behold, that is what's happening. But I have not been able to find anyone else to agree with me until, hooray, I'm reading the papers this weekend, right? Articles are popping up all over, and people are finally saying it looks to me like the crude oil is what created this whole monster. In fact, I'm reading in the papers two things, and you've heard these both from me. Crude oil was going to wreck the world's economies, and the BOE and the ECB should never have raised rates over this summer. Both of those articles are combined together if you read the financial regs that are out this weekend. So go look for those stories for yourselves. Now, I will discuss that and many other profound brain things in my head, as Julian from Madagascar would say. If you come on down to my site, it's www.livewithoscar.com. Jump into my chat rooms, and I will give you my opinions of what I think this whole picture means, where it's going, and where we will end up. Of course, I follow the technical analysis, but that also helps me to develop my mental picture. So make sure you come on down to the site, and let me show you what I think is going on, and let the charts tell you for sure what's going on. All right, traders, now let's go do that lesson. Remember, this is part two. Lesson on the inverted head and shoulders formations. Let's go to the charts. I'll be right back to you. Okay, traders, you are looking at the S&P daily bar chart, the December S&P daily bar. Now, if you recall, I just did a lesson for you, and I showed you upright head and shoulders, and a lot of times you will come out of the head and shoulders, get about to the height of the middle of the head, and then break, right? Well, then I also showed you that the inverted head and shoulders has the same characteristics to it. If you, in fact, go down, come back up, and start to head back down and get to the middle of the head, if you fail to get below the middle of the head, of course, a big rally will ensue. Now, I'm expecting us to get through the head, but I'm not blind. If we don't get through the head, boom, reverse, up we go for a little while. What you're looking at here is the inverted head and shoulders that we discussed in the last two videos and the one that we traded throughout this week or I should say throughout the week ending 11.07. Now we had the dead cat bounce. It turned around and dropped. It didn't quite get to the middle of the head, but it's there in the head right now, as you can see. And traders, technical analysis is not an exact science. It's more of an art. It's something that your eye has to pick up on. So that's close enough to call, so far, a test of the middle of the head. If we turn around and rally from here and get above the shoulders, well, Upside we have in place for a little while. 
The other side of that is if we get down below the head completely, well then away we go and say goodnight Irene. Now as technical, anal as technical analysts, this stuff right in the middle is going to be very choppy and who knows where it'll come out of. Indicators around the world would make you think down. Just be cautious here of what's going on traders. It's not a giveaway trade when you get the inverted head and shoulders because nothing in, in analysis is, but it's a pretty good clue that we will go down. Just in case we start to head up, I want to show you the technical reasons why. Now these next couple of charts should reinforce that for you. Let's look forward. Okay traders, once again, just to show you, we are now looking at the Dow Jones Transportation Average Daily Bar. You have the same inverted head and shoulders here. You had the dead cap bounce and the break. Didn't quite get to the middle of the head, but got into the head area. And we will see what's going to happen. Now these next couple of charts should convince you that you got to keep your eyes wide open in these next few trading sessions. Let's look at this next chart, traders. Okay, traders, just to show you how well this technique of testing the middle of the head works, here's an upright head and shoulders in the NASDAQ between Feb 08 and August of 08. You had a shoulder, a head, a shoulder. We all know this is there. Everybody traded this one. Look what happened, traders. We rallied right up to the middle of the head, bingo, and then had a massive break. Do you see that? Rallied right to the middle of the head and failed and had a massive break. The next chart will show you just how massive that break was. Okay, traders, when we had that last head and shoulders and the test, we were up in the 1819s. Look at the price over here. Look at the massive break that we took. We got all the way into the 12s, below 12 into the 11s on the NASDAQ daily bar chart. Now we have another inverted head and shoulders. This is today's action. We had the dead cat bounce and we had the drop and it got just about to the middle of the head here, traders, and stopped cold. Will it rally from here? Well, indicators are calling for a rally. World economics isn't calling for a rally. And Donald Trump, I'll bet, isn't calling for a rally right now. But it could happen. So we need to keep our eyes fixed on the analysis right here and fixed on the indicators. Let's look at another example of a head and shoulders testing the middle of the head before the next move. Okay, traders, now you're looking at another example of how a head and shoulders formation has a characteristic of testing the head no matter which way it goes, whether it's inverted or upright like this example. Shoulder head, shoulder, this Canadian dollar December daily bar between April of 08 and July of 08. April, May, June, July, you put in this massive head and shoulders formation. And then the Canadian dollar rallied up right to the middle of the head traders. And you know what it did after that? That was par with the US dollar. That was at 100 with the US dollar. We went all the way down. Look out below, baby. This thing went all the way down. You gotta go, go look at a chart right now of the Canadian dollar. It's so low it wouldn't fit in this view right here. First you had the test of the middle of the head. That's part two of this lesson I wanted to give you. You can't always count on a head and shoulders giving you a drop because if you get past the test of the middle of the head, you will take off. Same thing with the inverted. If you have this, you can't always count on an inverted giving you a break in a bear market because first thing you have to do is get past a test of the middle of the head. You've seen what happens now when a head and shoulders goes and tests the middle of the head. That's what happened in the upright head and shoulders, the last few we had. We now have inverted head and shoulders. And who knows, traders, if it doesn't get to the bottom of the head, we might have to end up long this thing. Again, I wouldn't fall in love with the upside. But you need to follow analysis for what it is. Stay pure to your analysis. Make sure you stay a pure student in the art of analysis and let the charts tell you what to do next. So you've seen those charts, traders. Once again, just so that you get this right, let's do this one more time. Oh, my pretty artwork has to go now. All right, here's what I want you to remember. Because the situation that we're in is this one right here. We have the inverted head and shoulders. Actually, that would be an upright. Let's do the inverted. We have the inverted head and shoulders, right? And simply, you have a 
lot of work done here, and then it goes lower, and you got work here, and then it goes higher, and it looks like a head upside down and two shoulders, a man standing on his head would be the easiest way for you to remember that. If, in fact, you are in a bear market, the likelihood is you go into it, up to the right shoulder, and have a big break. On the way down is where it gets important. If you fail to get lower than the middle of this head right here, you will turn around and rally. So we're in a very interesting area right now, and I want you to remember that. Of course, I am extremely bearish because if you read the papers that are out there, you look at the economies, you look at the economics around them, and you just listen to the street, there's no way this market is a bull. We all know it's a bear. There's no way it's turning into a bull. But if the analysis points to a rally, a rally comes, and that's the way it works. And as I've said, I'm a pure technician and a student of the arts. They dictate where markets go, not my opinion, not your opinion, and certainly not TV Land's opinion. So make sure you take a look at your inverted head and shoulders, go try to find some in the past, compare them, see what they've done, make sure that you do this though. We are in a bear market with inverted head and shoulders. They act differently in a bull market. An inverted head and shoulders formation in a bull market is a continuation pattern for the bull. In a bear market, the inverted head and shoulders is almost always a continuation for the downside. So, I want you to understand that and go do your homework, make sure it lines up with mine before you consider trading one side or the other. With that in mind, traders, we obviously have no choice but to start off with a neutral stance on Sunday evening for Monday. This video, the weekend webinar is 11.09.08 Sunday for Sunday into Monday's trading. Make sure you are aware of what's coming. Stay bearish minded, look to sell the rallies. But just keep that inverted head and shoulders lesson in mind. I hope these lessons are helping you traders. I hope these weekend webinars are helping you. I know that this analysis works. I am living proof that it works because I've shown this to you in 370 plus videos. On top of that, I have about 40 or 50 videos of classes that I've held at my site long. They're booked. They're in the on-demand, which you can go see at your leisure. So take a look at the on-demand classes. But I'm here to say I have over 400 plus videos with a lot of great technical analysis in those videos. And a lot of it really works out exactly the way it's supposed to. So do your homework and see what you think about that. All right, traders, give me a call anytime, day or night, 702-629-4755. And as always, keep those emails coming. Shoot your emails out to Oscar at futuresanalysts.com. All right, traders, say this to yourselves every morning, every afternoon, every evening, because it'll help you keep your emotions out of trading. And you know what that is? Stop serin! Emotions are out! Can you see the gecko in my head? <laughs> Futures trading is risky and can cause substantial financial loss. We do not claim or guarantee that you will profit from the information provided. That being said, I am a 24-year seasoned trader on and off the floors. This is how I've made my living for many, many years. Good luck trading.